Hey guys, Technivorous here. Today we are just going to go over some of the settings for my profile for my Kira TiVo Tarantula Pro profile. I don't have any of the Tarantula profiles up on my GitHub yet for download. I will get them up shortly. So far, I really only have the PLA profile on the TiVo Tarantula Pro because that's all that I've printed with it. It doesn't quite go as high in temperature as the Ender 3, but there is only a 10 degree difference. It goes to 250. So we should be able to do some PETG and things of that nature as well. I just don't think ABS is going to work as well. Um, but this system is also not enclosed like the Ender 3, so I won't be doing much ABS on, on it either. So um, let's go ahead and jump right into this here. Now this is Kira. This is version 4.3. I do have 4.4.1, but it messed with my profiles a little bit, so I don't use it very often. Um, this is my go-to version because it is new enough to have the rotate face to build build plate feature which I use quite often and doesn't mess with my profile so uh, I get quite a quick speed from my TiVo Tarantula Pro it prints probably about twice as fast as the Ender 3 while giving the same quality uh, I know a lot of you Ender 3 owners don't want to hear that it's sad but it's true and I don't think it has anything to do with the TiVo or the firmware or any of that stuff I think mostly it is the volcano hot end that thing is capable of heating and cooling super fast and has two fans on it for part cooling so it's pretty intense when it comes to throwing down parts in a hurry um, that being said my standard layer height is about 0.2 uh, the uh, it's pretty standard resolution I will run prints at this resolution on my under 3 they do end up a little bit liney um, the quality is slightly better on the tarantula for some reason even at the same layer height Line width pretty standard, initial line width pretty standard. My shell is looking like a two wall line count. On the Ender 3, I'm running three. Um, that might have something to do with a little bit of the speed, but the quality is still coming out very nice and looking really great. Sometimes with only two wall perimeters, if you're using a semi-translucent filament, you can see into the model a little bit. Um, not quite through it, but you can see the lines from the infill showing on the outer surface of the shell and if that happens go ahead and kick this up to three it's not going to hurt anything it will just take one more pass around in the g-code on each layer make your shell a little bit thicker and make it harder to see the uh, indentations and bumps from the support that you or the infill that you've put in there my infill is pretty standard at 15 percent sometimes i'll fluctuate between 15 and 20 but 15 is pretty standard for me and my printing temperature for pla is 210 the build plate temperature is 60. Now, if you're just getting into the TiVo Tarantula Pro, I will warn you that the build plate does warm up agonizingly slowly. So the best thing that you can do while you're waiting for that to heat up is go in there and hit tune and go to nozzle and set that to the temperature that you want it at um, because it'll generally be to temperature before the bed is ready to go, but the firmware heats the bed first. So you can heat them both at the same time and make it so you'll start printing basically as soon as the bed is heated by entering the right temperature here but then once you start your print hitting the tune button and adjusting the nozzle temperature as the bed heats up flow is at 100 percent retraction is on and it is pretty much the same distance as my ender 3 uh, the speed is a little bit lower at 25 and my print speed is 100 millimeters per second now this is my standard print speed for a good quality model i can turn this speed up and still get a decent model uh, or I could turn this speed down and get an amazing model, which I would do if I were going to print something at a smaller layer height because more detail requires more time in order to get the precision that you need. So um, this is perfectly fine for most things that I print. I did all of my Mandalorian armor and the Mandalorian helmet at 100 millimeters per second and the surface finishes on them were really nice. Didn't really have any problems at all. My combing mode is set to all and it's set to avoid printed parts while traveling. Those you don't really need to worry about. The combing I would turn on um, to either at least all or not in skin, but the avoid printed parts, um, that's gonna add some time to your travel time and it's not really necessary. Uh, I just like to use it when I'm doing taller models because sometimes it keeps from knocking the model over. Print cooling is on, my fan speed is 100%, regular fan speed is 100%. Now, this you may have a couple issues with, I will tell you, that the fans, because there are two of them, two part cooling fans, are extremely strong. So 
There is a possibility that while running them at 100% speed, they could cool your nozzle outside of the tolerable range, which would cause your printer to throw a thermal runaway error. Now, it's not actually occurring. Uh, it just thinks it is because the fan is blowing cold air on both sides of the nozzle and cool it to below a point where it should be reading and then it just keeps pumping in voltage and the temperature, if it doesn't get back up in range in a certain amount of time, it will shut off. So I recommend starting your fans at 50%. You can go into the firmware and make a change to adjust that tolerance range to add a few seconds to it and not turn it off. Generally, this is the best fix because it will allow for that awesome part cooling and extreme overhangs without giving you the risk of turning off your thermal runaway protection. So um, support is generally turned off for me. Um, my support overhang angle says it's set to 50, but this, honestly, I've done overhang tests on this. The overhangs are amazing with your fan on. So I could go all the way up to 70 without a problem, um, 75 with minimal support. So uh, that is extremely low. And in fact, I'm gonna change that now just so I remember in the future. Um, and then my build plate adhesion type is set to a raft now at first i was having issues with the right side of my gantry not being fastened the eccentric nut wouldn't quite work it wouldn't get into place where it needed to be so i added another linear screw to the back of that that z rod so basically it climbs at the same rate on both sides um, before that gantry dropping down as the or excuse me the right side dropping down as the gantry raised caused a problem and i can show you uh, basically this side right here would sit here as that side raised until it got to a certain height and then it would start traveling up um, so we fixed that problem but it was causing some smashing of the object to the raft and making it impossible for me to remove it from the raft and the reason I print a raft on my TiVo Tarantula Pro is pretty simple you can see here that I'm using one on the model that I'm printing now I know you kinda actually can't see that uh, let's try this. I have another camera here. And we can jump over to the printer camera and give you a good look here. If it wants to work, hang on one second. And there we go. Let's shine a little light on this subject as well. And there you have it. Like I said, it's printing on a raft because it is a lot easier to remove from the build plate. I can just get my putty knife or my scraper up under a corner of that raft, simply pry around the raft, and then it pretty much pops right up. So it makes it a lot easier to remove the model. Uh, and now that I can remove the raft from the model, I am a lot happier. And actually, while we're staring at this, I am running really low on filament that's on the spool that's on here. So hang out with me for just a second. You won't hear me talking for a minute, but I am going to show you how amazing the pause feature on the TiVo Tarantula Pro is because I'm going to pause it and we'll change to some green filament. And then uh, while I keep talking, we can let it run and you can see the change real quick before we jump back to the last of the settings I have running in Kira here. So I'm just gonna hop over here. Basically, this is really simple. All you have to do is go to pause print. And then if you simply remove the filament without pushing down on the gantry because you don't want to move it you want it to stay right where it's at in order to print properly I'm gonna grab some green that I have here and my clippers and I'm gonna trim at 45 degree angle and we'll throw this back on it goes on pretty quick now you don't want to leave it sitting in one spot too long because it does I mean, it's still hot, so there's still a little bit of oozing going on and things of that nature. And that can be a problem if you leave it there too long. In fact, there's probably going to be a slight zit in this spot where I change the filament, which will clip right off with no problem. All you have to do then is go and click Resume Print. And I will go ahead and, we'll, since this is a Kira video, we'll pop over to Kira here. 
and I think we will jump back in a minute and I will show you how green that is so um, now that we are back in Kira the last things that we have here as far as settings for my TiVo Tarantula Pro are um, special modes the print sequence and spiralized outer contour neither of them are turned on right now but I will use them both uh, this is what's known as base mode it'll print a single line thick perimeter around the outer wall of whatever object you're using so it's great for printing bases all as one complete model in a fast amount of time the other ones I have here are the tree support enable draft shield and fuzzy skin now uh, tree support is the support that I use most often in Kira. It works really well. It uses a small amount of inter uh, uh, filament, and the interface with the object itself is relatively tiny, so it leaves little to no finishing work after removal. The other two are a draft shield, which is something that I will use if I do decide to print a little ABS with the Tarantula Pro. Basically, a draft shield builds a wall around the object, kind of in the same fashion as tree support or spiralized outer contour and just basically prevents air from hitting the model on the sides, which can cause layer splittage with ABS and is the main reason you want uh, enclosure if you're printing ABS. Basically, it holds the warm air between the print head and the model instead of letting cool air flow over it and crack the model. The other one is fuzzy skin. If you haven't seen fuzzy skin before, I have a video on fuzzy skin mode available on my channel. Feel free to pop over and check that out. It is basically exactly what it sounds like, and it gives you a textured skin on the outside of the model. I don't use it often, but it is very nice for some things, such as handles or objects that I know are going to be wet or hard to hold onto. It gives you a great grip. Um, I've also done it on printed models, such as Batman models and things like that, just because it gives you a really cool look to the effect of the model. So that's basically it. This is my standard profile for the TiVo Tarantula Pro. I will export this, get it up, and you guys can download it and use it. It runs really well and is extremely fast. Uh, our color hasn't quite, you can see it changing to green, but you can't really see it in the camera yet. So let's go ahead and go to profile settings and manage profiles. And I will take this profile right here. TiVo PLA Profile Tarantula Pro. And now that we have that, we will export it. This is my Kira Profiles uh, folder, basically. And I'm going to export it there, and then I will push it to GitHub. So it actually, this one will be available. This will be my first one available. Um, TiVo Tarantula Pro PLA. All right, so when we're done with this video, I will go ahead and do that push to GitHub so the file should be available. I'll put the link up down below. Make sure you grab the TiVo Tarantula Pro profile and not any of the Ender 3 profiles because I have tried crossing them. And regardless of how much they tell you these machines are alike and how much they look similar, the G code does not come out the same. So uh, make sure you grab the right profile and that's basically gonna be the end of this video. Let's transition back over here I'm going to pick the camera up because you can get a slightly better view from above. Maybe. And yeah, you can kind of see the green showing through. As we go higher up, it'll get more green. I'm basically just running spools out that are running low. So I'm just going to keep switching this. It's going to come out rainbow colored. If you've seen any of my Mandalorian videos, you'll see that the armor is all uh, hodgepodge, mismatched, and patchwork in color. And that's basically because it's all going to be covered up in the end anyway. So I didn't see a point in using any of my whole rolls of filament when I had a bunch that were partial and needed to be used up. So um, thanks for watching, guys. If you need more tips on Kira, stay tuned. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are going to do a PETG video at least with the Tarantula Pro, and we will also probably do some finer detail profiles for PLA 
running in at the 0.14 or 16 millimeter layer height and that is it as always this channel is brought to you by these fine patreon supporters if you'd like to support the channel on patreon head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous that's gonna be it for this video as always i am technivorous and thanks for watching don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month so far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it for my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.